this one to the cloud. It'll be posted just like normal. Um, but if, it, you know, if ever you want me to live stream it, just tell me if we think we're really going to hit something that people really want to hear about or whatever. I think it's always important to live stream, but I think we're just going to kind of talk in circles, not in circles. I know we have important things to talk about, but more just for us than anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. This is designed to be kind of a, you know, 30,000 foot view planning and where, where items of discussion should be directed to for the year. Perfect. So, um, with uh, no further ado, this is, it is uh, 1902 on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. This is the community, this is the community committee being called to order by um, myself, David McNamara. In attendance, we have Her Honor, Mayor Tiffany Hughes, Councilman Tony Benedetti, and Councilman Joe Curl. And also in attendance, we have um, Councilwoman uh, Diane, uh, Diane Shrimp. So, thank you everyone for coming. Um, so, as we discussed at, in December, and as I sent out in December, there was a list of requests that um, the residents all had, um, at least the ones who communicated with me, their requests. And let me pull up my copy. I'll see if I can. Um, I don't really think I can screen share very well on it or at all on a tablet, but I will read. Um, come on, load, load, load. Village, here we go. So. Here are the resident requests for 2021 that were given to me. There has been a request for restoration of asphalt on the multi-use pathway on Minerva Drive. I would assume that would be, would that be a streets matter to refer that to, or would that be a Franklin County? Well, I think that's, or... in, that's in our radar right now. The path, okay. I think that we're talking about by the parking lot, connecting to the building. All right, wonderful, wonderful. So we guys were on top of that, wonderful. Um, there has been, when I wrote, man, when I made this poll, there was a huge request for a multi-use pathway to connect our neighborhood and schools with the Alum Creek Trail. I understand we can't really knock that out in one meeting. Um, same thing with bike path connectors with Jordan and Road at Park Lane and um, alternative to parking lots and walkways on Cleveland Avenue. Um, so those are things that the people put on the agenda for us to at least look into. Um, there was also a request for a actual bathroom rather than a... Um, porta potty set up near the basketball court. And I know we were discussing that in the early stages. Um, Can I interrupt? Is, what, um, what we, what, oh, I thought we were, uh, the idea here, I've guessed, but I thought the idea was uh, that we wanted to, to see what might be passed on to planning and zoning, because what you're talking about are all take some research and time, et cetera. Et cetera. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, so so the idea was, what does council agree so they could be on the same page as planning and zoning? As yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, what I was attempting yeah. to do, what I was attempting oh. to do was to go through the list in case people didn't still have theirs and then see in which direction we send these matters, the ones that we feel are feasibly addressed. Um, do we send it to planning and zoning? Do we keep it within council itself? Do we keep it, you know, where are things going for the year 2021? Was what I was, what I, I, I hope we can at least get started figuring out. Does that clear things up, ma'am? Uh, yes. Cool, 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 so cool. I, I had a question about, do you have, is there a, several people that have asked for these or is it just, uh, you know, one, each one of these is one person, one person suggestion. I mean, that is an excellent question, um, Tony. So, 
the most of them were one or two commenters on Facebook. And if you dig through the Minerva Park, I believe it's open discussion. You will have you can find my original thread to see how many people commented on each. But I do have marked down that the multi-use pathways and you know trail and uh, bike path connectors were incredibly popular. That is something that I figured would probably end up with planning and zoning. Um, but of course, I, I would be more than happy to lend whatever assistance we can as well, um, whatever that ends up being. Um, overall, it look. I mean, of course, the lakes will be a large priority. Um, and of course, we'll have, um, oh, where did my train of thought go? But yeah, so has there been a planning and zoning meeting for 2021 yet? <laughs> no, we're having it tomorrow. I'm on a roll. Tomorrow, gonna, okay. We get another meeting tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I, sadly, I'm going to be at work tomorrow, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, I guess maybe since... we go back to the top of this, top of the list here, so we don't, you know, as we go through it. What was the first thing? The first thing was the um, asphalt breakdown on Minerva Road that right, I was the asphalt. Now that yeah, that you guys that, were aware of. You know, from what are we going to do? That's something that we're working on already. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. What was excellent. the next one? We're working on that in progress. Excellent in progress. The next one was um, just the five or ten comments I'd received about multi-use pathways or um, connection to the Alum Creek Trail. Um, That's another which one again, say, as being the liaison uh, from planning and zoning. That uh, excellent. You know, we're having a lot. You know, that's been part of our. Uh, discussion you know there's there are ongoing discussions about the connector with jordan road and uh you know i think we want to talk about a connector a connecting path from uh far view you know to the or from the pool to the new development you know so i would say that you know pathways are on a or on pnz's plate already excellent i would say that the asphalt i mean that's something that that would be an administrative thing, I think, but we're working on that. All right. Okay. Where, where would you connect up the trails to the Alum Creek Trail, David? Okay. Do well, they have yeah, a that was, there has been discussion with Morpsey, with, you know, in the past, they had talked about it. Uh, but I think the issue is with the traffic down there and then the, uh, you know how that intersection of Westerville and and uh, Minerva Lake Road is not the safest. I think it's yeah. You'd want like a like a dedicated crosswalk or a bridge or a tunnel. I, oh, yeah. Again, I, I I know Morpsey was involved with that discussion as well. But to answer your specific question, Joe, I don't I don't know the the exact latitude and longitude they'd be planning. Well, I, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, in general, because it would have to go across uh, old route three mm -hmm. and then there's an open area there and then it's still got to cross the river. But if we yeah. ever did get connected, if anyone's looked at the maps of the trail system, it would connect to, it goes all the way from Cincinnati to Cleveland. Well, that'd be cool. There's so, a short little but, but, section of Westerville, uh, for some reason or other, they haven't completed, but Westerville has a very sophisticated trail system. Well, once you're hooked excellent. up, you could do your 100 mile bike ride real easy. That'd be excellent for us to aspire to. Madam Mayor, you were going to say something? Yeah, the um, Eric and I have actually talked about it in a couple different meetings that we have had um, because we've obviously gotten that request quite a bit. We had somebody write some letters and send in some information as well. Um, Morpsey is one of the people that we have been talking to grant right not grant writers but um, grants in general and you know just how to make it work because obviously you know it's a it's a very populated area as far as traffic and all of that goes how can we make it work um, where could we connect to it and there are some 
there are some pathways to make it work. It's just whether or not, you know, it's something that we can financially do with the assistance of some other, with some other people. The problems that we're, not the problems, but some of the, I, I'm just, now I'm getting way too into this and I don't want to go too far into it is that's all fine and dandy, but then you don't have any pathways in the village. So you're trying to connect us to a pathway, but you have no sidewalks, you have no nothing to get from Cleveland Avenue to Westerville Road. So, you know, we're assuming, and you know, this is just an assumption that if we did this, they're going to want to see a pathway to get from Cleveland Avenue to Westerville Road to, you know, get even further into mm -hmm. that way that connects up to the sidewalks and everything. So there's probably going to be more on our part that we're assuming um, that's going to come into this. That's also going to be a discussion with the schools coming in. Um, that's where, again, we've talked about getting some sort of pathway on one side of Miller, Minerva Lake Road. Um, nobody has said which side of the road or anything, but that is also a discussion that we have started in how we um, could we by any chance convince the builders while building the infrastructure for the new school to throw in a row of sidewalk that might help in that connection project down the road? Well, I mean, again, I think that's everything that we would, you know, whether or not we looked at some that's sidewalk in front of part. our building, but it, yeah, there's that's the easy part. Exactly. The, the, the part that you're going to have is, you know, there's going to be trees in the way, there's going to be driveways in the way, there's going to be brick walls in the way, there's going to be, you know, trying to put a sidewalk in on either side of the road, you're going to have issues. Um, it would be very difficult, I can it, imagine that. Oh, it's, yeah, very it's, nice trees. It's, it's a multi-year project, and it's something that has been discussed. Um, it's great to hear that you guys want to be involved in something like that, um, because it's also, you know, you can only get so many grants, and you can only get so many things that you would have to put some in yourself. I am as on board and I know people that live on Minerva Lake Road are probably going to like cringe when they hear me say this, but, you know, kids being able to walk to school for, in the village and having some sort of pathway and I'm, whether it's a sidewalk, whether it's a, just a small path to get through to where they're not walking in the street is something that I'm completely behind. And, and again, yes. there will be yes. some people that aren't, but children trying to walk to school. I watch the kids walk to school um, because I've driven my kid to school every single morning that early and I see these kids walking in the street when it's dark um, and it's not the safest thing in the world. I, it, we didn't used to have this many kids in the village and now we do. So I'm all on board for it. Um, yeah, and that's a plus, that's a wonderful thing. That's strength for our future. I mean, the least we could do is accommodate these children. I mean, walking to school, that's the, the era of people not walking to school. That's the anomaly, you know? Right. Yeah, we're fortunate yeah. to have these, you know, for the, for the people that want them, you know, we are fortunate to have these schools in, in the neighborhood for somebody that drove their kid to school halfway across Westerville, um, the entire, I, I would have loved to have had a neighborhood school when my kids were in school. So I can't And we're going to have hours, one now. Yeah. How many hours I've spent in the car dropping off my kids to and from school at Heritage. So they literally go to the third furthest middle school away right now. So anyways, without going crazy in that topic, um, that is a discussion that we plan on having with Westerville schools. That's a plan, you know, that's, it's a multi-level project. It's something that it's going to take every bit of planning and zoning and council being on board to make something like this happen. And it's also going to be, you know, depending on if we can make it happen, um, the residents getting on board because you're going to be working in many of their yards. And I mean, I think it is the future. I, I'm, I'm only here for three years, but I, I foresee that happening eventually. I will be surprised yeah. if it doesn't. I'll make a suggestion. Clintonville had a heck of a time yeah. without sidewalks. There's a sidewalks here, none there. Yep. Heavy traffic, high street. Mm -hmm. They put a very nice bike trail system in down there. And it's, you know, rather than trying to describe it, people interested might want to just cruise down around right. along where the river is in Clintonville and see how they did it. Yeah, no, you, you are, you're correct. I, like, again, I, I think it's a great thing, you know, for somebody that walks, I hate walking in the street more than anybody. So it's dangerous. It's half of the complaints we get speeding cars and this and that. So trying to, you know, fight the traffic and all that, it would be, it would be nice. We don't need it on both sides of the road. You know, I'm not pushing for everywhere in the village, but I think just at least one connector right through the middle of the village and then Jordan Road getting connected are two of my biggest things that I hope we can really get moving on. We've well, that's excellent. Jordan Road forever. That is excellent. So it sounds like 
and again, still, this is just going into my second year. So my first full year with you guys, I, I know that there's still some things that, you know, you guys were discussing long before I got here. That's being addressed to me now as new year's requests. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's wonderful to hear that we already have, you know, interest and some, some balls are rolling at least, which is excellent. Um, Another thing that we might want to discuss as, as we, as a council agreed last night, that one of our major goals of 2021 would be a remediation action taken on the North Lake at least. Let's discuss among the group what we think that should look like without going absurdly into the minutia. Let's, so I guess I'll begin. I absolutely would like to see a dredge of some sort done. I think everything that we've had, you know, shown to us indicates that a pretty comprehensive you know, dredge is necessary. And we're already, thanks to, um, thanks to Tiffany, we have gotten a fair, we have gotten at least one estimate to accomplish that goal. Um, So what are other people's thoughts on that? Does that sound fair? Do we want to go a completely different direction and start this whole process over? No, I mean, (laughs) you knew I'd have something to say about this. Um, I'd like to, <laughs> too. I don't think, <laughs> and Joe, uh, <laughs> I don't think, uh, draining the lake this past year was such a horrible thing not to do it again and have that. I would, the- I would agree with that. Um, because I do I, know- I, the thing that I wasn't able to do and, and now that I saw where you would put a pump is, um, is there was never any pumping of water to try to eliminate, uh, you know, or to, to enable it to dry out better. And that's why I keep going, you know, um, this, you know, sir, or whatever test they did about how much moisture is in the, in the muck. I'm sure depending on what day you went out there, it's going to have a lot of water. But if we were to, uh, and I think it's very doable to get a pump and pump that thing out and, and keep it dry, to the point where you can get activated back in there. Small, you know, right. and big, well, that's my vision. I, I and read the again, estimate. You know, we heard a lot of pushback about, uh, you know, from people about it being drained and it doesn't look good, but we still can um, it do exactly what we did this past year and have- We got a lot of junk out of South Lake. I was, it, it, well, it, you right. know, it wasn't the drain and dredge, but I was very happy with what we accomplished. And there's areas over by the dam that 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 we didn't even get to, and there's a bunch of a bunch of debris, you know, de- dead trees back there. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, I think that's true. Is the north end of north do, it, too. do what we did this year, only a little bit more deep, uh, um, say detailed, or, or come up with a plan for pumping it out. Yeah, but out. let's. How about we focus, because, you know, the North Lake is significantly worse. I love these ideas, Tony. I agree with them completely. And there's no reason that we can't also lower South Lake a little and, you know, continue with the cleanups. But let's find a way, get North Lake, you know, drained and divert the water like they discussed. Um, Again, we need to find a way to do that. Let it dry out, have a cleanup, dredge the thing out and then let it refill in a healthier state. That is, again, that, that's my vision. I, and I don't think you're in my visions con- conflict at all. Uh, we well, just would I want think... to be, we just want to be a little careful about leaving the lake drained or, you know, lowered maybe quite as long because we did get a fair amount of pushback. You know, that but... whole thing, it, it's dependent on how much it rains because I know, you know, I that know. valve was open the whole summer. And it filled up and, you know, and then drained back down. It was only able to drain in North Lake after, you know, it was like 10 days to two weeks of little to no rain. That's why, you know, I think we can get a pump. You know, we've got pumps at the, at the uh, uh, pool. Yeah, I mean, if we want to throw a pump in the lowest part of North Lake, empty it out, 
hold a cleanup, you know, get the big crap out of the way, make it easier for excavators or whatever we end up going with the, that group we have the, um, that group we have the, um, oh, that group we have the estimate from to dredge out whatever we want to go with, that'd be excellent. It gets the community involved. It shows concrete progress on our part that we're listening and working for the people. Well, and I with mean, the, the, the amount of money that's being, you know, you know, $200,000 price tag to have it dredge, you know, I think this year, uh, you know, the conversation needs to be, you know, had with some farmers that w ask them, you don't want how much what is the price <laughs> how much would you you know would it cost instead of just saying hey is there some way we can dump this at you know it's like what would it cost for us to dump it somewhere close by not that far away you know that's where i'd like to see this uh well this it, it it would it would help now that we have soil contents samples made and we know what's in it that would definitely be helpful or that is definitely helpful that we have it now. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I recall correctly, there was a, um, there were a couple options listed on that estimate of where we could dump. So we would at least have a baseline to shop around against. Is that a fair assessment? So here's what I will, uh, I'm gonna give you everything I know um, in 30 seconds. The hold up for the estimate um, for months was trying to find somewhere to dump it. I found one place, he found one place, both were not too far off in price. Um, in order to do the less expensive option, we still have to do more testing um, because they are not 100% going to take it. They're about 99% that they are willing to take it, but we do have to spend a little bit more money on a couple more tests. So, and that was described in the actual email that he sent me. So okay. um, Tony is not wrong. I will tell you that the guy that gave us the estimate has also told us, everybody has told us, if we can find a farmer or something along those lines that's willing to take it, um, that would be something that is gonna be significantly lower. But the issue is um, because it won't, the way that it is, it's not gonna pack and most farmers are not going to take it once they see it. So- I couldn't um, imagine they would, it's full of like- yes. So, and I'm not saying that they won't. Yeah, I mean, I'm, bad. yeah. That so, stuff is organic. Yeah, there are, there there are Cheetos mm -hmm. bags under a foot of mud. Yeah, there's well, the, the problem is, is once you get really far back, the problem is that's where you sink literally to your hips in, in an instant. And Hal would totally agree with that because I couldn't even walk back there without just going straight down. So, it was rough. It was rough in back there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Again, um, I'm not here to debate it or anything along those lines. Um, if somebody has a recommendation on finding someone, I will tell you, Swaco, I had talked to several different people that was searching high, low, and everywhere in between to find anybody that was willing to take it. Um, I, I, again, I have some notes that are sitting at the um, office, but you know, they have put word out to people, farmer, you know, again, they, this is something that they do. This is not, you know, they have contacts none of the contacts were willing to take it. So, they don't want our... No. So, and, and that's just, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be the negative Nelly here. I don't know where to tell us to take it at this point because I have not been able to locate any person that was willing to take it. Um, I even went as far as to ask my dad whether or not this is something we, he would be willing to take. My brother has like eight acres in Marengo. Um, and he said the same thing. It's just going to be mush. I mean, it's not really going to pack. It's not really going to do much of anything. So, you know, he just said that most people aren't going to take it. I mean, it's as simple as that. He said the same thing. Now what's closer to the front. I do believe people would take that does pack down. You can walk on it. That is not the problem. It's the stuff that's further back. So, you know, do we split it up? Do we do this? Do we do that? I, I have no idea. Um, at that point, you're starting to talk about other things. The only thing that I wanted to, the only reason I'm bringing this back to light is because I know Joe is probably going to mention this here in a few minutes. If anybody has any interest in revisiting the suck up thing, um, I know Tony did not. I know that there was a couple people that didn't have interest, but I know that there were some members that did um, as just a trial run. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we have a 250,000 plus 250,000. I, I, the only, you know, this is where I become, we don't have that money. So the next step is, you know, we can start making all these plans 
But in order to do this, we have to put it out to bid. We have to figure out who's going to put the documents together to put out to bid because Mike said that last night that this is not necessarily something that he does, but could get some assistance with it. You know, we're talking 60, 60 plus days to get this out to bid. You have to get the, the bid documents. Then you have to advertise it for, I believe it's 22 days. Um, you know, even if we got all of that information done tomorrow, you're talking, you, you got to turn this around pretty quick. Um, yes, you even absolutely. Have this done this year. Okay, well, then where are we getting the money to do this? Are we going to try to do a loan of some sort? Are we going to do a grant? Are we going to, you know, do some sort of OPWC type thing? Well, now you're a year and a half away. And we talked about that last night. That's the problem with OPWC. You go in and you do all of the grant and, and then you have to pay $10,000 for a grant writer to actually do all of this because we can't write this grant. I can't write this grant. I mean, maybe one of you guys can, but I can't. Um, I mean, the last time we did it, I mean, the packet was, the, and Tony, I think you remember seeing it was like this. That is the only benefit. And I know we started talking about this briefly last night of the charter. Um, we, there's no options. We have to put it out to bid and we have to have money to pay for it. And we don't have either one of those. So it, we, it's not just, we need to go with this metropolitan company. That's not an option. We still have to put it out to bid. So now take all of that and put that in a nutshell. And I'm not trying to be negative Nelly. I'm just trying to slow everybody back down that this is why we continually stop at this point because getting somebody to put the bid documents together is tens of thousands of dollars. Putting it out to bid itself does not cost anything. But then again, if we want to do a grant, we have to come up with the money. You know, we've got to pay the money for the grant writer. And then that's a super long process. Or we figure out from our finance department, how we're going to finance it. This is going to be the same thing as the building. There's another issue also. And that was, I'm certain the clay bed, when I read those documents, they are saying, you know, that, that their estimate that I'm not saying we're hiring them, but they had said that everything was dependent upon having a proper clay bed at the bottom and all that. I don't think that's a problem, but diverting the entire storm sewer so that none of the water, well, when there's storm or melt water that comes in, does not go into the lake is, is something to look at too. I don't think that's possible, Joe. That's well, I think I it's think possible. It would take some doing, but I mean, that's what they asked for. Well, and I think I, it's possible, but you know, it comes in and well, right behind your house. I mean, how, how would right. we divert that? <laughs> there would have to be a temporary uh, route for the water to take. Sure. I mean, Stuff. we could put piping. I mean, that's that what they were talking about. That's yeah, it was that's piping, what, piping what, around into South Lake. That's what I envisioned is, uh, the, uh, or, or a ditch. You could dig yes. a trench for it to go, yeah. but then it has to be pumped up because the trench would be lower than the pipe that goes under Minerva Lake Road right. over to South Well, Lake. that's why I go back to pumping the thing out. I think, you know, I've got some experience with pumping out the pool and, you know, and I've only used a two inch pump. And if you use a four inch pump, it can move a lot of water. It could drain that sucker in a couple hours. When it gets, if it's been drained and uh, uh, it hasn't rained much. So, I mean, I think, you know, we're at the same point like the mayor was saying is that, you know, I think the next step is to, and I haven't tried, I haven't put forth any effort in getting a hold. I've got friends with farms, with farmland. They're just crazy enough to take this stuff. If you say, I'll give you $25,000. I agree. <laughs> and Tony, I'm not. What in I'm getting at is that right. I don't think we've gone about it. And I think the first call is a guy across the street. When I say at the, the Rainier, the, at the, on Westerville Road and Minerva Lake Road, I've already called he's on not, them. Well, oh, my and call, their results were negative. He over there, he's got a dump already going on. He's got he's got like railroad ties. Looks like someone dumped. The, I mean, look at the place. And that, I know, and but I'm place. telling you, I already called all them. I but called. Did each. Say, but did you say how much would it cost if we gave you twenty five thousand dollars? Would you? I just flat out asked them if, if they would be willing to. Yeah, if we could dump it there and how much it would be, and they said they absolutely will not take it. 
And then we called the one that's further down. I, there was, there's like three different ones on Westerville road. So then they sent me to a different one. That's a different, um, it's the same company, but a different place, like on the South side of Columbus. So then I called that one. I Kurtz brothers or the mulch people. I talked to every one of those uh, and they would send me to the next one. And it was one of those that, I mean, the way that I do these conversations, cause it's not my first rodeo, you know, trying to get people to do certain things is you call them and you say, okay, if you, if you don't do it, I know you're in the business, who would you recommend that I call? And every single one of them would give me one or two places to call, call these people. They're great. Da, 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 da. And I would call them. And then they would say, yeah, no, we're not willing to take it, but try this. So I literally did that for two or three days and got nowhere. Well, I didn't, I didn't not get anywhere. Um, we did get the, the place that was willing the Swaco, but like I said, it's so expensive. Um, I can't remember what that, which one that was, oh, but, and then the guy from Metropolitan, same thing. He has literally been working with all of his, and that's, that's what they do. He's been working with all of his connections and came up with one place that still wants more testing done to take it. So, so I know that this isn't crazy that people do this, obviously. Um, was that the reason that, that they say no, that it's because they're afraid of there's some contamination or a, a no, lack of biodegradability to it. It sounds like it's just worthless. It, it's to them, it's worthless mush. Well, I've dealt with the stuff. It's mostly leaves that don't biodegrade. They're slimy. They, uh, right. they, they must they, have a million kinds of crap growing in them. Right. Well, I it smells. I taught my uncle's got a, a pond that he's dealt with this, and he's got a friend that uh, does dredging work. And, you know, up in Delaware, there are farmers that will take the stuff and they just till it in. It's buy it, you know. But, uh, you know, that's not what every farmer will do. You know? and well, I don't if know you need to find out which ones will. And you right. if, you need, if you need landfill or you have somebody that the there are ways they need. treat this stuff so that it breaks down, but it, that's expensive for them. So, oh, right. so well, the Go ahead, ma'am. So, no, I mean, so we still go back to the same scenario. It, if we're going to remove remove it, the other issue that we have is the amount that needs removed. Again, we all are fully aware that this hasn't been done. The amount of, it's still a guess as to how much we're removing, as you can see. I mean, this is a company that is pretty familiar with what it looked like when it was, you know, forever ago, um, that they did do the North Lake. This is, I believe, Tony, is that not accurate? This is the guy, they did the North Lake or the South Lake. This is the same company that did the South Lake. Yeah, I mean, this um, guy is the one, he's like the main person, the biggest yeah. company in the area. Right. It does this stuff. So it's something that this is, this is exactly what they're expecting, how much they're expecting to remove. We still don't know that exactly because obviously, you know, we don't know how far down we're going to have to go to get to the bed. Um, so this is his, where he believes it's going to be. But my opinion right now is, you know, where do we go from here? Because we've got to find somebody that can help us do the bid documents to at least find out. I mean, not to be crazy. Maybe we can find, if you got an excavating company to bid on it, maybe they have that clearly they may have a place to put it. So maybe we're all trying to spin our wheels with what somebody else already has the answer for. So, okay. So let's. So what, how do we proceed in that direction then I'm to get, idea. okay. I'm just kidding. No, um, I I mean, know, I've got one person I can call because I, it just dawned on me. Like I said, my uncle and uh, had this, has a, a pond that he has had dredge and he knows a guy up in Delaware County that has a machine. He, he's even got like, uh, you know, he does the, he can do it with like a backhoe from the edge. You know, that's what he's good at, but it doesn't work in our situation, you know, cause you can't get in everybody's backyard. And I but think he that may that's... know someone, he may have a, someone up in Delaware County. My, what I'm trying to find is the closer it is to here, the cheaper it's going to be. So, you know, I've got friends out in West Jeff. I'll ask him and say, right. you know, that's my, my next step is to start talking to my my Morrow County buddies <laughs> say, hey, I got there's, there's a place where there's lots of places that might be potentially places to take it, Morrow County. Right. In my if if, if you County. gentlemen, if you gentlemen have contacts out there, if there's avenues that have not yet been explored, by all means, make some phone calls. Because right now it sounds like 
right now it sounds like we can either spend a little bit more money and possibly have cheaper place to dump it or we can pay the Swaco and you know well that whole, that gets us gets us at that high number <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so well, I still I, think I still think it's worth considering while we ponder all of this to get some of the like we did on the south end of North Lake and on South Lake, get some of this you know bigger debris out of there and cut it up. It's mostly floating trees and logs, not the mug. Oh, by the all means, yeah. They, the issue that they came up with is they spent a day and a half back in there. And they're, they're battling the same thing. Half of the areas they can't get into, they sink all the way. They can't get equipment back there. You can't just carry them out. Um, back in that back area is just very difficult to get the machinery. And that was the battle that they were fighting. I mean, they have, they have rowboats, they have different things like that. But there's, again, once you get into some of those smushy parts, they couldn't, they spent a day and a half in the North Lake and they were they got 10 times more done in the South Lake in the amount of time that they were there than they did in the North Lake due to the difficult maneuvering in there. Simple as that. So our money went well, our money was spent 10 times better over in the South Lake. Now the North Lake is the one that needs all the work. Yeah, we're gonna have to more. rip that band-aid well, off at some point. Yes. It may as well here's, be us. Here's what we I'm need curious to be the ones about. to act. There's trees there that can be, uh, you know, have lines attached to them, they can be pulled out and then cut up. Well, you know, you would have to pull them north, which would go along where near where the canal is, but there is a long stretch right where the uh, East Shore Court pipe's supposed to go. That would tear up some ground up there, but there are vehicles that could pull it up that way. Right, There's but a that's somebody's property up there. I mean, that's, we would still have well, to. Well, yeah, it's Paul Miller's property. It's mine and it's the new people next to me. Right. So, and then going the other direction, if they went up towards, you know, even if they could get up towards Park Lane and all of that kind of stuff, it's, so it, it's just, it's not as easy. You've got to get documentation signed and, you know, permission, and then you've got to come back in and fix their property as soon as it is, because you know, you're going to tear it up. I mean, there, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. You're going to make a mess in somebody's property if you end up doing it that way. So, yeah. yeah. So it's I mean, that's gonna, job. yeah. So until we're ready to do the big job, I mean, it, to me, it's. I, I just I don't want to mess up residents. Well, I, I was thinking kind of along the lines of one tree at a time, you right. know, to, to keep making some progress. Right. I got my John Deere up with a chain to some of it and pull it out. Yeah, I mean, it all that's needs done. Well, let yeah. me take the fence down for a minute. Yeah, there's no question about it. It all needs done. Um, and I know this is, you know, this is exactly why we've got to figure out, a, you know, what we can do to move forward. I know we need a bigger lakes plan. I know we need all of that. Um, but at this point, step one, and I, there's a hundred steps to this, but to me, it's still, and I, I know I'm not the, the person that gets to decide how we spend the money and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like we've talked about this long enough. It needs dredged. I, I don't, yes. I mean, I, and I will tell you, um, believe this or not, and I'm not going to give you a name, but I actually have had somebody else reach out to me that doesn't think that we should spend the money on it, that we should let it fill in. I, I'm not even kidding about that. So, and turn it into more of a wetlands. And that was not, I am saying a recent person. They don't that's live still on not what we want to do. Can you at least say whether they live on the North yes, Lake? They live right by there. I will tell you that I they mean, live on, right by them. They live by it or they live on the north. I'm going to give too much away. There's only about eight people over there. So <laughs> uh, we, will, we will say that, you know, they, they've, they would like to, and I shouldn't say this. Um, we have residents on that, that area that would really like to be a part of the conversation of what we do. Um, but in my opinion, it, this is where maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like if we are dredging it, I think that the, we're just dredging it. I, I think getting too many people involved in all of that. We're gonna have to get them involved to get permission to get in some of the yards um, and being cooperative. I, there's one thing I guess that I've learned with the sewer projects is, and I'm not implying that any one of these particular residents would be like this, but I can tell you that I actually had more complaints about the sewer project that shocked me that people were complaining because we were doing sewer work. Um, they weren't properly notified 
Um, they wanted to be updated every time that we were in front of their home. Um, I mean, there were numerous and, and it was surprising to me. This is something, it's a different world to me. Uh, to me, if somebody's doing a project, I'm thrilled with it because I feel like then that's your money being spent to do this project. So yeah, we're, we're trying to help. Correct. We're so I was, I will some. tell you that I, and I can't count them on one hand. That's how many people in the last three weeks were complaining on in the Lakewood area. Um, I had multiple people complaining because they were upset that people were over in that area working. Um, so my point being that it surprises me, like me, I would open up my yard and tell people to do whatever they needed to do in order to fix whatever. That's always been my way of, I don't have a problem with people cutting through my yard, you know, as long as they're not stealing something through going through there. I, I like, I, I don't have issues with that. And I, to me, when it's surprising to me that, you know, some of the things that upset people. So I have learned um, that we need to make sure that we are really on top of the residents that are in that particular area and making sure that they are involved to an extent. Again, getting permission to being in the area, being, you know, getting all of that kind of stuff is gonna be very important when this project starts. Um, so I, that's gonna be a huge thing of communication that we need to make sure that we're on top of. I mean, I guess that's the easiest thing to say it because yes. not everybody watches Facebook, not everybody is gonna know what's going on, um, but it's something that we need to make sure that, you know, everybody's fully on board that there could be a mess in, in the close vicinities of their yards and all of that kind of stuff. So. Hopefully okay. we have people that are really willing to cooperate and willing to give us some of the space to be able to work because I think the project would go a lot faster. Um, but if they're not willing to, I respect that and we will respect that and do the best that we can do getting the equipment in and out of there. Okay, so that sounds wonderful. I was, this takes us back. I was on the shoreline on Hoover for 60 years and I, the stuff that went on there, but I... Columbus wasn't real nice about it. They'd come in and if somebody made a complaint, uh, they'd say, oh, gosh, great. Uh, let's see if you can find somebody to tell that to. What meanwhile, would you get out of the way? Yeah, I mean, and again, it's, it's, it's a learning curve for me. I've only sat here for a year. So it's, it's a learning curve for me that, you know, I, not everybody's different. So I, I don't judge anybody for you know, maybe they just didn't understand the project or something like that. So I guess my point is the communication may not have been as great as I had thought it was for some of those things because I was surprised at some of the complaints we got. Okay. Um, well, when so I mentioned forward. communications about uh, uh, community-centric communicating, if we know when there's going to be people working in some place and these are areas where you're seeing their complaints, I, you know, I don't have any problem with people you know, writing that stuff up and doing notices and uh, explaining and whatnot. It's my understanding that everybody did have a notice. Number. <laughs> everybody, everybody in the area did have a notice when the work was being done, it, especially if it affected them. So this is all wonderful stuff. And I fully agree with all of it, the communication and the reaching out to the nearby property owners going forward. This still takes us back to where we currently are. What is next? I'd like to see some cleanup along the shoreline on the parts of North Lake where we're talking about doing that. It's dense vegetation, some in there. That's something could be a volunteer project. Of course, the weather's not real good for it right now, but um, there's some down trees, some leaning trees and some things. And I know the tree work's expensive. Is, that, is any of that in the bid, Mayor Tiffany? No, not in the bid that we got for that. That, that is strictly a dredging project. Strictly so that, that is exactly what I meant. How do we get what is the next step to get dredging? Let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, let's say for the sake of argument, there's nothing nobody else offers to dredge. That group is our dredging people. What happens next? How do pay, we pay proceed? Can't huh? figure out how we pay two hundred thousand dollars for it. Well, write a check, Tony. <laughs> well, yeah. or we get our own back to do it a little I mean, bit at a time, Tony. <laughs> yeah, get out your checkbook, Tony. We got it. 
Well, I'm about to pay Powerball, so get a hold of me tomorrow. We'll, we'll All know. right. <laughs> I'm about ready to do a dredging startup company. <laughs> Maybe that's okay. the four of us. Maybe the four of us should go out and play the lottery tonight and see if we can dredge the lake with it. Hey, I got the ticket like, here. I haven't checked the numbers. Well, I think tonight, the next step is to do what we did this past year. Absolutely, <laughs> only with the North Lake. We did. You know, we spent a day and a half over there in the North Lake cutting down trees. But when you. Uh, yeah. The other part to this is, is, you know, when you're spending two, $3,000 a pop for a day, that adds up quick. Um, and it does. if you I can't know. get the equipment in there, it adds up even quicker. So when you're getting 10% of what you're getting out in the other, and, and again, it has to be done, but we've got to figure out a better way to do it. It is much easier to do it when I, I, and nobody wants to hear this because I will tell you, we did have some people that would fit they don't want to see this lake going up and down. I mean, we, we know that now, again, if you're dredging, I think they're going to be okay with it. Um, yeah. But to lower it, to continue to lower it just to cut trees down and this and that, you're, you're going to start getting some pushback. I, I definitely will say I did start getting pushback towards the end of the year. We, yeah, all we did last year. I, I yeah. got some emails well, I, too. I was, I was thinking a minor cleanup along the shorelines that we could do as volunteers or a little bit here and there. So uh, yeah, to make I mean, it more accessible, but I, I I'd like to make a, a point, and uh, the point is this: that if we get a lot of this crap that's floating on the top of it, that's visible out of there, which a lot of it's not so difficult to do, it's the appearance of the place is going to improve dramatically without right. dredging and without draining or anything. So today, in her. Preliminary confirmation hearing, Secretary Treasury nominee Janet Yellen spoke about the crises and the struggles facing us as a nation. And she stated that now is the time to act big. And there's no, I love the look Tony's giving me. Um, and there is, <laughs> I can't wait to see where this is going. <laughs> the, um, my, my point is taking off a few stumps, taking the Taking the logs off the top. That's, that's not the job. That's just that was exactly that was over that the heat from the complaints. That's true. But it is the it's you know, this is an era in which to act big. You know, we like like I, like like Mayor Tiffany said, we're it needs done. It's been needing done. It would be wonderful if we could be the group to get it done. Act big. <laughs> it's all I so here's what I, I can do um, funding that you won't want to hear about <laughs> right so here's big... potentially where what we can do at least today and you guys tell me where you and this is something that you know I may just have to do a little bit of research about to try to find somebody that can do bid documents and exactly what I need to do to get it put out to bid okay that's number one okay number two is we do plan on having a finance meeting very soon. Um, Good. Unfortunately, we still do not have the documents we need to finish out the rest of the year. We don't have it yet. Now, um, is there a way to combine, com uh, have communication there to observe for that meeting? So we um, could. So here's what I, to answer that question, yes. Um, I send out an invite to every single council member to every single one of these meetings. It is your choice whether or not you want to come or whether or not you don't. But I send out for the safety committee meeting. I invited every single one of you, whether you are on the committee or not. I do that with every single meeting. Um, the, there is definitely not an issue with that. That finance meeting is going to have a lot of information. Um, that finance meeting is going to be end of year. That finance meeting is going to be November, December, January. Um, finances, that is going to be a very detailed meeting. Um, there's not going to be a lot of room to discuss certain things, um, but there's definitely, with the lakes being something of what it is, um, having a conversation with both Leah and Kim, as far as next steps go, I think that's going to be a conversation we really need to have. Um, Excellent. And what we need to do to secure some funding. And I don't know, and I, I this is going to sound horrible on here, um, but I'm not as excited about trying to do an OPWC loan or something like that. That's going to take a year and a half to get, um, I, I don't know what your guys' feelings are towards it. I know if we could get this price tag down, 
and find somewhere to dump it and we're only talking 250 compared to 500,000, I don't mind the little bit of interest that we would pay on it. Interest rate rates are so low anyways. Uh-huh. Um, I think waiting another year and a half for an OPWC grant loan, whatever is just, yeah. I, I, just to think that this could go on another year and a half, two years does not sound appealing to me. I'll get a yes. hold of Greg because he, he knows places all over the, I mean, Indy, parts of Indiana, all of Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia. I'll ask him where they might need some stuff. I don't know what the answer might be, but I'll inquire. And then I'll inquire through uh, the university. Yeah. So Okay, they, that is wonderful. Their agricultural department is huge, and uh, they may have some leads. Right. And that, I mean, that's ultimately what we're looking for. Because dump, you know, dumping it, as you guys saw, was the cost. I mean, I'm not saying that we couldn't find a dredging company a little bit less expensive. And the guy told us that. I mean, the guy was very upfront about it. I mean, this is a company that does this. This is, you know, it's a reputable company. It's a company that did it before. Um, some people might feel a little more comfortable going in this direction than, you know, ABC dredging or ABC excavators or whatever. But, you know, ultimately, you guys all make that decision. Um, I do believe you could find an excavator that could do it drastically less expensive. Um, it's just a matter of finding somewhere to dump it and figuring out how we're going to pay for it and making sure that we put it out to bid because we have to do that. So that's the one downfall that is going to slow it down. But that to me is something that I feel like if we got all of that part out of the way, maybe we find somebody that's willing to bid on it and do it a little less expensive than some of the others. Tony, um, you're a general contractor, correct? People that need this material because uh. they... I'm a remodeling contractor. I wouldn't call it a general. Okay. I, I knew you did some kind of, you know, contracting work. And I, I mean, do you, would you have any leads, anybody with excavation experience you might be able to do a, like a friends and family for well, us or? I have, I mean, the new, the new bit of information that I have is that I wouldn't say new information, but I haven't started talking about spending any money you know, or being able to pay, you know, someone. But yeah, I, I've got some people that I can, uh, I mean, that's, again, I've got a lot of uh, friend or business friends that uh, no excavating company at all. That's not the problem. It's where do you take the stuff? And you're correct. <laughs> that You are okay. 100% correct. Um, so to end that, David, I mean, there, there are things that I think everybody could be making a couple phone calls, anybody that they know, um, I'm going to see what we can do to get some, and Mike kind of threw that little ring in our, you know, thinking that we would have to do, um, uh, one of those, what is it? RFQ or our whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, RFQ. Yeah. So, you know, happening to do all of that just to get, uh, just to get a company. I mean, that to me just makes my head want to spin. Um, just to, because oh, then have I have to bring, idea. the thing that you got to remember is I have to bring that to you guys. You guys have to approve that. Then we have to approve the, uh, like, it doesn't have out to be as complicated take... as it was with the architects. I understand that. It doesn't have to be that difficult. Though. No, it, it it definitely doesn't. But you still have to go through the whole process. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Council's approval, and then we have to start with the actual bid documents, and then you have to get, and those take weeks, and then you got to put it out to bid, and that takes twenty two. You know, you got to leave it out there for three weeks, and so my point is, is, you know, you're going to have to get the engineering firm approved from council, then you're going to have to get the the bid documents approved through council, and then you're going to have to put it out to bid. I mean, you're going to be talking about June before you bat an eye. So, you yeah, know, let's, the unfortunate yeah, part of all of this. Does anybody have a, an, uh, an estimate of the cubic yards of how much there is? The only Which thing I have is the bid that we sent. That, that mix, you know, when they process manure that want material to mix, this is, that's excellent. This is excellent material for that. I'll, I'll look into that some. There was some numbers in one of the, that estimate from a few years ago. And I'm thinking it was 100,000 cubic yards. A little mm. while. But that was the north and the south. Like, that yes. was like the whole, that was all. Everything. Yeah. You know, so. I don't know, guys. So it seems like the next, it seems like the next part of our goals should be deciding where this stuff will go <laughs> if we have, I mean, look, here's the thing. We have an option. 
it's an expensive one, but we have an option. So if we don't, if we're unable to find another place, we do have a place we can put it, and then we'll need to find a way to finance it. How much do you recall the test being to see, to, you know, qualify our waste for the cheaper storage place, Madam Mayor? Do you happen to have that information? Yeah, hang on. Because if it's something that we can just do administratively, we may as well. Because I gar I can darn near guarantee it will be a uh, cost saving in the long run if it works. Okay, hang I on. guarantee there's some places that would want this stuff. Finding them is what I'm going to work on. Okay, Anybody that's excellent. Larger yeah. amounts of landfill or uh, grading, this kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions if you guys don't mind. Go ahead. Um, I am estimating 6,000 cubic yards or 7,500 tons to be removed from the North from the North Lake. Is that correct? Do you have any plans for the South Lake in 2021? So his initial, he's asking me if I know, but clearly, you know, he must have gotten 6,000 cubic yards from somewhere. Well, that's odd. That's a number I'll use because it doesn't have to be precise. Um, Construction debris point of contact, additional analysis. Da, 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 Swaco. Hang on. I thought he gave it to me. Hang on. Okay. That's not it. Let me see if I can find it. I thought I had it, but it's not. Well, there was also all that stuff about the baskets, the, the giant barrels to dry it out in before you transport it. Well, that, be, that becomes an issue. Where do you put those things? Yeah, and well, it, I, it, it was well, my understanding there's a lot more people take it if it was dried out and decontaminated. Right. <laughs> How about the construction site where the school is being built? Is there enough room there? That was my initial thought. Um, and I just didn't go any further. Enough. It's got to be close enough that you can pump it into the container and then let it dry. You can't. Uh, you can't. Yeah, it that makes sense. Oh. 500 feet. It's got the numbers that I can remember seeing is like five. It, has to, it can't be any further away than 500 feet. Well, Which, darn it. Because the first, when when the South Lake was done, they literally trucked away water. They didn't even give it time to settle. They just pumped it into tanker trucks. Is the way that the South Lake was done twenty years ago. I was going to say, Tony, do you remember? Were you were you a part of the village government? No, I wasn't were you around. I wasn't around when that happened. Okay. Do we, is the, city of, the city of Hilliard recently did three big ponds, and I talked to the people at length, and they said that they started out to scoop the stuff up, and they had a place to take it and everything. They were putting it in the trucks, and it was seeping out the side, so they were running their street cleaners behind the trucks. When they got to the city line, somebody said, stop. Figure it in the price, you just do street cleaning every night. You, you can't <laughs> drain this stuff all the way to Grove City. <laughs> so, is there anybody, do we know of anybody who was around during the last dredging and draining that would be able to lend insight on how they got past this point that we've been City stuck at? They no, just like I, just so said, I mean, Minerva Park. Is there anybody still around that we know of who was a part of I've the first dredging? About how, what information are you trying to get? They, it was, you know, yeah. they got a loan. The last time the yeah. village got a loan of a couple hundred thousand, two or three hundred thousand. And that yeah. was 20 years ago. And that process, like I just said, was to pump it into tanker trucks and then take it wherever the heck they took that to. Yeah, they basically bit the bullet and paid the money, and this is the company that they went through. So, it, yeah, he, Tony's correct. So they didn't tanker trucks because they don't leak. 
Right. So to an to easily answer the question, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They contacted this, you know, they probably put it out to bid. This was the lowest bid or whatever, because they had to even do that back then. Um, and they, they got a loan for it. And the problem is, is we're all cheap. Um, and none of us want to spend that kind of money. And I think that's why we keep going in they circles. Just, we're all we going, this is at some point, we're going to just have to rip the Band-Aid off. That lake will get worse every year until it turns itself into right. a wetland. Well, and that's and maybe the that's... conversation that we're going to have, maybe a finance conversation. Is I don't know that we're ready to rip the Band-Aid off, as you keep saying, because we got to rip the Band-Aid off for a building. You know, so, you know, so at this point, I think you know the building's a higher priority than dredging the lakes. That's why I think moving forward this year, we're going to do, you know, I wouldn't say the exact same thing we did this past year, but uh, along the same lines is, you know, some lake cleanup, at least one lake camp, because I think we can get a, we got a pretty good turnout from. Yes. Yeah, up. we we absolutely need to do another nine. lake cleanup or two. And, and I know the one time it was pretty bad weather, so, you know. Yeah, that I was the first one in June. A, we were all out in the rain. Yeah. And, you know, right behind me, you can see, David, I got a bunch of pot bottles from the North Lake when I went over there. If you oh, my if goodness. That table, there's, and they're, they're old ones, man. Some of them I've never seen before. I've um, got um, five or six sitting <laughs> on my, um, from the South Lake. I'd love to, I'd love to see your North Lake one sometime. I'd love to well, dig around for some them up and we'll show them. I'll bring them to the next lake cleanup. I have found tons of these old bricks, most of them in, in, pristine condition that were made in an old uh, uh, kiln in Gehanna when Gehanna didn't exist. I, I look on eBay and they're going for $50 a piece. Wow. Well, at any rate, yeah, I completely agree that we need to, um, you know, do, you know, lower the, lower the thing and do, you know, some cleanups again to show the people that we're working for them. Uh, that we're trying to do something, but on a grander scale. So when people might discuss not being ready to rip the Band-Aid off of paying for the North Lake remediation, would that be a topic to discuss at the next finance meeting as well? Or where would we go from that? Exactly. I mean, at this point, I think it's going to be what can we afford? How can we get the money? And how quick can we get the money? those types of questions. Um, if it ends up being that we need to do an OPWC, you know, that's one of those that she's just going to tell us, look, you're going to have to go this direction. Um, okay. And if that's the case, that's the case. But, you know, if it's some sort of grant or something along those lines, it's just a very long process and, and a costly. I mean, again, you, we have to pay somebody to um, do, you know, do the loan and, to do everything. So, or to do the grant, sorry. Um, so there, there's some, additional steps that you'll have to go into if that's the way that we end up doing it. But let's, let's do, let me do a couple things. Um, I will reach out to finance because I don't want to wait until the finance meeting and maybe get you guys some updates on that. Um, and then, you know, again, finding out how we can get the bid documents. And Mike said that this was, you know, it might be a little bit more, and I'm just going to say this, Mike said it might be like you guys were at last night might be a little bit more expensive to use him because they don't have anybody local to do all of that. Um, that said, if it's going to be a pro an extremely long process for us to be able to get another engineer in and do all of that and just as expensive, maybe we just find out from Mike for sure how much it's going to cost us. So I think we need to look at all of the above. Okay. So then we'll, then we'll at least, okay. So that, that is wonderful. We've got they will at least have some ideas of where else we're going to get us out of this rut. Okay, perfect. Well, I hear the um, EPA offers uh, funding for projects like this, but I haven't looked into that. Again, yeah. there, there are people who do that day in, day out for jobs. We can, right. we can have them do that when we get to that stage. Um, so that's a lot of bottles back there, Tony. I was wondering if that's what those were. Um, but... <laughs> But the last thing I wanted to talk about now that we have possibly gotten the wheels turning on the lake again, and now that we're, you know, we're going to do a couple, uh, you know, at least one another big cleanup with the dumpsters, because that was so well received and useful. The last thing I want to talk about is the pool. We need to get 
a pool meeting with Mr. John. So I have his number. I just, I haven't called him yet or talked to him. Um, do you guys remember, or Madam Mayor, do you remember what, like how his preferred communication is, how his preferred meetings are? Because I like, we need to get in touch with him and get things rolling too. At this point, right. I believe he's um, pretty much still high, or I don't even think they're hybrid. I think they are completely remote still at this point. So in the evenings, he's usually pretty flexible. Um, okay. Yeah, as far as that goes, as long as we give him a week or two, I'm sure he will be totally fine with that. So if we were to do this in February, and the big things to remember is just this. Um, in order for us to advertise the new pool prices, we do three readings, and then they actually are approved in 30 days. Well, obviously, yes. our, we know that this is coming. There's no reason to try to do an emergency or anything. Mm -hmm. um, we like to get this on the website. We like to try to get some of the advertisement going out so people can start doing that. Um, and obviously, we want to make sure that we're ready to go. Um, February is fine, but I would say anything past mid-February, that puts you two readings in March, one in April, and you're barely passed by May. So, If there are no hiccups. If there's no hiccups. So, I mean, the first reading of the pool fees would be awesome to be by the second meeting in February. Yes. So let's get in touch. Um, let me see if I, I got a new phone. Let me make sure his number actually transferred over um, in my contacts here. Um, John Poole. Yes. Okay. Um, I can walk across the street and give him a message if you'd like. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Um, I'm going to text him right now and see what days or what, what days evenings work best for him Perfect. so that we can all have a little powwow. So I don't want to keep you here any longer than I have to because I know every one of you guys has, you know, your own lives and things to do. So. We talked about the two or three major resident requests, all of which seem to be already in their appropriate directions. But, you know, we can always add on more as the needs arise. We moved or we just we figured out that we're still in the same rut we found ourselves in with the lake. But we're going to have a, you know, a cleanup or two this summer and try to figure out how to get the funding for the dredging. And lastly, we are going to get in touch with Mr. John to establish a time for a pool get together and so that we have all the time we need to get uh, everything read and passed within an appropriate amount of time. Huh. Is there anything else that is felt that we need to discuss? No, but well, I would we, we were going to work on where to try and find a place to dump material. Right. Well, yeah, that's one of the avenues. That is one of the avenues, Joe. I know you said you had some, some of your buddies or some of your contacts, Joe. So that would be, I, I look forward to hearing back from you about that. Um, the thing that I would say about the late cleanup is just make sure you schedule it far enough in advance to where I can get the dumpsters and do all of that. And we have an appropriate amount of time for advertisement for the late cleanup, obviously, we have no idea what weather's going to be, but just picking a date some point in time, whether it's March, April, May, June, um, do, uh, you know, I would just do a spring one at this point for now, in case we are moving forward by that point. Um, so the just say hi. The snow on the ground, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not either. I mean, I'm going to go with probably April or May. Um, just don't do too far into May because you, you end up with graduations and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would probably, yeah, I'd probably say. I think they're going to be doing it right this year? <laughs> probably not, but. I'm sorry, I didn't want to hear you down. No, it rains, it rains a lot in April, too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll get in touch with John. Joe, you get in touch with your people. Madam Mayor, thank you so much for your support and your digging around with the financial options. I'll um, do it tomorrow, yes. Okay, Um. I will. Yeah, I'll get in touch with John right now. I'll get in touch with him tonight, and we'll get that date figured out. Um, Tony, would it be inappropriate to ask you to bring over one or two of your favorite bottles? Some of those let look me, real old back let me there. Clean them up first, all right? That's okay, okay. <laughs> clean them up. Yeah, I, I hosed all mine out. off I'll and bottle brushed them out last summer. I got a couple. <laughs> I got a couple of um classic Coca Colas from the fifties. There's a 
a plain green glass from 53 and there's even um there's one or two fantas and a uh, seven up or sprite from the 60s that i found i'd love to compare notes with you maybe dig around some, with you later this year it looks like some dates of the 50s in there well oh, you and i'll well, be digging around together later this this spring <laughs> those uh, old pepsi be, bottles that's why i like to run away yeah did you drain find them, any I... of those old pepsi bottles with the with the swirl around them tony the first, very first Pepsi bottles had swirls. Yeah, this is a Pepsi with a swirl. All right, let's go. I gotta go. I'm hungry. I'm grabbing the Pepsi, and I realize I'm hungry. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think we made a reasonable amount of progress. We're at least all starting off in directions that we need to be going in. If there's nothing else, um, I suppose that wraps it up. If you're bored, seven o'clock at the community building for PNZ tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to oh, be yeah. at work at seven o'clock. Oh, uh, that's a question. Tony, I don't it. forget we have safety. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, how, much, yeah, yeah. How, how much closer are we to really being able to do meetings in the? Uh, you're you're doing meetings in the community center already, huh, Tony? Well, we've been doing planning and zoning meetings in there. I mean, I guess the. The reason we've been doing that is there's not as many people required at these meetings. But I mean, that's a good question, Joe. I'd like to get back to doing meetings, and that's something I think will. Wow, it isn't going to go over well with with the <laughs> with the other people on council. I don't think. With hey, I'm getting my I'm getting my second round of the vaccination on the second. You'll of be February. good. <laughs> you guys can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> no, at this point, I'm leaving that up to everybody else. Um, it's your guys' council meeting. I'm not fighting it. And I believe that um, we've done it safely as far as the planning and zoning. We have six people that's on planning and zoning. Um, Saturday work sessions would probably the, be the biggest ones. Um, but some of our meetings literally could have seven people at it. Um, we don't necessarily have to have Eric and everybody at all of them. The first Monday meeting, I know we have Chief and Leah and all of that. So that would definitely be more people. The second meeting of the month, um, we really don't have that many people. Um, it's comfort level. We wear masks when we go in for planning and zoning. Um, I set the tables all completely across the rooms from each other um, is at the farthest point. And um, it's more of when everybody else decides that they want to go in. I, we have meetings in there every single, not every single day. I don't want to exaggerate. We have meetings with anywhere from four to eight people in there at any given time. So well, they got the they got the new air system in with correct. the uh, UV and all that. Yep. So we have everything going as far as that goes. Um, we've not had any issues, problems, or anything like that. But not everybody's on the same comfort level, and I appreciate you know I I, I definitely. Um, I'm not going to make somebody do something that they're not comfortable with, and I know some people you know they have to go home to people that are potentially you know more susceptible to illness i don't have that here so it's easier for me to say ah, oh, let's go um so i choose not to i'm gonna let council make that decision and council is going to decide um eventually when they want to go back in the conversation to me it's it has nothing to do with me it has everything to do with you guys i will be in a meeting when you tell me to be wherever good answer mayor <laughs> well guys that's that wraps it up. Tony, I look forward to digging around in the muck with you this summer. But well, I can't wait. it's a date. <laughs> <laughs> it's a date. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.